Well, top of the morning, Southern Oregon, and welcome back to The Real Estate Show. We have a great show for you today. We're bringing back David Wright. David heads up not only Remax Platinum here in Medford, but he also heads up uh, CPM, the largest property management company in Southern Oregon. Uh, CPM, uh, back in the day, used to stand for commercial property management. They do residential HOAs. Uh, they do mobile home parks. It's a great company. And David has been in the business forever. He has a very unique perspective, very well-rounded perspective. So we're so excited to welcome him back. Uh, while we're waiting for David to jump into the studio, let's look at our local statistics because folks, I've been saying it the last few weeks, things are changing and it looks like for the better. So let's start with Jackson County this week. Uh, Jackson County prices year over year, this is residential, uh, prices are up in Jackson County this time uh, last year, 23%. Congratulations, Jackson County. The average single family residential home now costing $589,842 in Jackson County uh, year over year this week. The number of solds in Jackson County year over year this week are also up 20% to 59 this week. Uh, another congratulations to Jackson County. Number of listings in Jackson County are still down. Uh, they're down 17% year over year this week to 711 residential listings. Josephine County, prices are still down, but only 5% year over year this week. The average in Josephine County now costing $428,248. The number of solds in Josephine County are up 12%. Uh, from this time last year, we had 18 closings in Josephine County for the residential market. Congratulations, Josephine County. Number of listings, though, are still down in Josephine County, but only by 9%. We had 361 single-family residential homes listed in Josephine County this week. Uh, Klamath County prices year over year are up 13%. Congratulations, Klamath County. The average single family home now costing $334,328. The number of solds in Klamath County are down only 5% year over year this week to 17 uh, closings in Klamath County this week, and that's residential. And the number of listings in Klamath County are up 25% year over year this week. Congratulations again, Klamath County. Uh, you had 290 single family residential homes on the market this week. So look, a little bit of news uh, on the good side for all three counties. Let's bring David Wright from Remax Platinum CPM on next. Well, welcome back to The Real Estate Show, folks. So glad you could join us again today. We have one of my favorite people in the whole world, David Wright from Commercial Property Management, also the head of Remax Platinum. Welcome back, David. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I always enjoy having a conversation with you. Well, it's great uh, to have you back. Here we are in the end of the summer, 2023. I think we have a lot to catch up on. The real estate world is way different than last time we chatted. Uh -huh. Isn't it though? I mean, I think, I think the last time we talked, gosh, it might've been, we'd been through uh, the start of COVID, the Alameda fires, and we're just kind of coming through this maybe second or third round of COVID. <laughs> so right, <laughs> there, there's been a lot the last few years for sure. And our area has seen a lot of change and, and uh, it's interesting out there. Yeah, and it it speaks to Southern Oregonians again. We always we always make it through, don't we? We're tough people. I've I've learned we're resilient. You know, I grew up in Ashland and and uh, lived up in Portland for a little while after college and moved back here. And uh, yeah, especially the last twenty five years since I've been back, there's been a lot to be resilient about. <laughs> yeah, it hasn't always been easy. But one of the great things about getting to talk to you is you have such a breadth of understanding and experience day to day in real estate, in property management, in commercial. Uh, you run a brokerage, a real estate brokerage, um, and then you just have the general housing market. Um, mm -hmm. And there's so much going on in our area. Can we start with the rental market yeah. first? Because that's kind of near and dear to a lot of people's hearts. Yeah, the rental market is, um, you know, it's it's still strong. Um, 
coming out of the Almeda fires, of course, we lost 2,500 plus units. And so that put a strain on the housing inventory, especially for rentals. A lot of those were probably middle income and rentals that were lost. So, so for a for a couple of years coming after that, we we had a probably a vacancy in the one percent range. Wow! Um, this year it's 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 loosened up a little bit. In fact, I got the numbers from the Southern Oregon Rental Owners Association just this morning. Hot off. Oh, of good. <laughs> and uh, so that's a group of uh, independent owners and some property management companies that report uh, residential vacancies and. About 7,049 units reporting 278 vacancies, so 3.9%. So it's about a little about 4%. Well, uh, so that's still low, but it's gone up. It is still low. It has gone up a little bit. And we've seen a little bit of a slowing on uh, filling units uh, just late, lately. So that's kind of interesting. There's quite a bit in the pipeline, too, of multifamily development. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've kind of been tracking that, but there's... Uh, new development out off Cedar Lakes. It's going to be about 100 units. It should be kind of filling up this uh, fall. And then um, they're broke ground on, I think it's going to be over 300 units out at Northgate Center. Mm -hmm. So we're starting to see some multifamily um, development happening. And then there's quite a bit of affordable housing through the Housing Authority. They're working on about two or 300 units in, in process. So there's some stuff happening. It'll be interesting to see how it affects the vacancy rates. So, so um, on the affordable housing, because um, people use that word kind of like people use the word Kleenex or Xerox or something, but yeah. affordable housing actually is a thing. And so are these 200 and 300 units, are those owned by the government or are they owned by regular people? That one's kind of a, it's kind of an interesting uh, setup with the housing authority. I they they own the units. They're kind of a quasi. I call it a quasi governmental agency, but they get okay. a lot of subsidies through the through housing and urban development to pay for the rents. Um, I think they kind of. I don't know the structure completely. I think they get some, maybe some private financing or some some type of uh, combination when they build the units, but. That is usually all those are, um, they're managed by the housing authority. They've got a, a, a housing authority gets the subsidies and um, the people that rent them qualify and get, you know, a certain percentage of their rent paid. And typically they'll have uh, their portion that they'll be paying. And in the state of Oregon now, uh, in the last, I don't remember when they changed that law, um, any landlord has to entertain um, a tenant that has subsidies. So you can't discriminate based on source of income. Uh, you used to be able to say, okay, this this uh, property doesn't take HUD, it doesn't take subsidies, but you can't do that any longer. You can still screen a tenant and you know they need to qualify um, every other way uh, that you have in your criteria, but you can't discriminate on source of income. So. So like in our properties, we'll see quite a few will um, tenants are, and we're seeing more of it are coming with assistance um, where the housing authority or has a voucher that they help pay the, the portion of that tenant's rent that each month. That's a lot of change all at once. Yeah, that's kind of been happening the last couple of years. I, we are seeing a lot more assistance. There's, there's more um, state uh, money. Uh, to help uh, tenants that are falling behind. And, and so, uh, and then also the legislature met this year, as we all know, uh, in the long session and passed a few bills that affect landlord tenant law. And um, one of those was if you, if you're in a non-payment of rent uh, situation with a tenant and you've gone to court or you're going to court with them, um, you have to accept their, their payment up to the time of, you know, a judgment that the, the judge will give, or you, if they have assistance um, and they've told you they're getting assistance, you have to work with them that way. You didn't have to do that in the past. Um, and then the other thing that kind of really changed 
is it used to be a 72 hour notice uh, on the eighth day of the month if a tenant hadn't paid. And now they um, kind of made it into law that it's a 10 day notice. And um, they extended some of the time frames on the mediation and, and uh, court trial. So uh, anyway, it's just new stuff. If you're a landlord, I would definitely uh, recommend making sure you're on top of those kind of things. Um, and that or reporting organization, you got the vacancy rate from uh, yeah. Southern Oregon Rental Owners Association. Yeah, yeah. they're great. Sora, S-O-R-E-A yeah. there. Yeah. yeah, if you own one unit on up to, you know, hundreds of units, you can be a, become a member, soroa.net, I think is mm -hmm. their name. And uh, they have monthly meetings, good education. They try and do the, you know, get their members to report vacancy. Yeah, it's a good option. Yeah, yeah. Um, unless you want a really great property management company, <laughs> like commercial oh, property yeah. management. Not trying to, uh, not trying to blow blow away here. <laughs> yeah, I gotta, I gotta do a better job of marketing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think um, isn't your company, commercial property management, the largest yeah. property management company in yeah. our area? You've got offices everywhere. And we do a little bit of everything. Um, we we changed our name to CPM Real Estate Services. Uh, CPM, got it. Yeah, but it's you know we we were commercial property management up until about 2010, and so we manage commercial property. We manage about 1,900 residential units, a uh, couple thousand HOA doors, and um, and uh, 14 or 15 manufactured home parks. We have offices in Ashland, and Bedford, and Grants Pass. That's a monster! Wow. We work in Roseburg. Got a little timeshare uh, um, uh, association up in Depot Bay. <laughs> so, wow, that's great. So you're still expanding. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, um, one of the trickier things that people come to us with is their homeowners associations. Um, you know, these, uh, the, we don't run the boards, but we run the day-to-day -day management and help uh, a homeowners association board govern their community. Uh-huh. So, so yeah, that's really been growing, it seems like lately. Well, that's great. So the economy has been kind of weird and volatile the last few years. Um, yes. How is that affecting um, your businesses? Because uh, you have so many of them in housing. Well, as probably you are familiar, the, the sales, the residential sales brokerage side has slowed up this year, um, you know, basically the end of last year uh, when rates uh, went up. I think people are settling in finally, um, you know, kind of realizing this is the way it's going to be. And um, well, for whatever reason, it seemed like right after um, the uh, Labor Day holiday, uh, people are coming out of the woodwork looking at homes again. And, and um, so we're staying busy. It just definitely has, as you know, I don't know if you guys have experienced it, but um, you know, it's changed the market. We I've I've heard that there's eighty to ninety percent of mortgages out there, and you know, or three percent mortgages. So if you don't have to move, maybe you're not moving at this point. But there are a lot of options for people who you know, even if you um, want to move or need to move, um, to kind of help with those rates, buy downs, and those kind of things. So so we're still seeing movement, but it is a little slower. Yeah, it's been interesting not having enough houses to sell yeah. but you know you've been in the business a lot longer than i have um but i don't recall hearing stories from anybody about sh housing shortages <laughs> that that's a kind no. of a new one yeah it's interesting the uh i was kind of looking at the there's 718 homes existing homes on the market as of august 31st so that's you know, that's not enough inventory. We need more inventory. Uh, mm -hmm. I remember going into, now granted, going into 2008, uh, we had too many probably. Uh, that was, yeah. <laughs> uh, I want to say it was closer to 3,000 homes on the market. And, um, you know, we know what happened there, but uh, somewhere in between would be nice, right? A normal. We haven't had a normal market in a long time. Long yeah. time. So when um, you hear um, and talk to on the sales side, um, what kind of information are potential sellers? Why are they not selling? Or is it because of their low rates or uh, are they worried about the volatility? What's what's holding them back, do you think? 
Yeah, um, I think it is. Uh, you need, I don't think a lot of them, you know, when, when you have kind of a, a low fixed rate, you may not be looking to do an upgrade of your home, like move up to another level, um, you know, in, in the price range, um, those kind of things. I don't think we're seeing as many of those. Um, I had, you know, we're still seeing people moving. Um, we're still seeing people, people come into the area. So uh, I just, I just, I do think that, you know, they hesitate a little bit when they have a 3% mortgage and, you know, may want to see where rates end up going here. Mm -hmm. What's and your? Yeah, I don't think the Federal Reserve helps every time they come out each month and kind of don't give a lot of certainty to what we're doing. Yeah, yeah. Just pick a direction. Yeah, yeah. That would be yeah. great. So, um, in the uh quick uh, twenty seconds we've yeah. got left, do you think the rates are going to go down before the end of the year? Uh, crystal ball it. Um, crystal ball it. Yeah. yeah, it's September. I think they're kind of in that <laughs> seven and a half to. Yeah, you know, seven three quarters range right now. Um, yeah, thirty year. I don't. I don't know. I don't see him going a whole lot further down, but maybe not going too much up either. I think we're going to kind of be in the sevens for a little bit. Yeah, I think so too. We're talking to David Wright of CPM uh, Property Management and also the head of Remax Platinum. We're going to take a quick break and then we're going to pound David for more of his insights and experience. Don't go away. Well, hey, Southern Oregon, welcome back to The Real Estate Show. I'm Alice Lima. I'm a broker at John L. Scott here in beautiful Southern Oregon. And we're talking to David Wright of CPM Property Management, also head of Remax Platinum. David, gosh, we have so much to talk about. Yes. So uh, right before the break, uh, we were kind of talking about the interest rates and making some crystal ball predictions. And I think you and I both agree uh, for whatever it's worth, <laughs> yeah. That uh, we think we're going to be in the sevens. Um, I could actually foresee going to eight for a little while, just if the feds get uh, yeah. fussy, which would be horrible, don't you think? Yeah, I mean, it'd be nice to go the other direction. Um, we were talking a little bit about how long I've been doing this. Um, I did get into the business in 1999. And uh, I think uh, that's about when I bought my first house in Medford, and it was nine point two five percent so wow yeah, it, was, it has been higher uh how much did you pay for that first house at well nine? yeah that's the thing it was 1500 square feet uh east medford for 129.9 so. wow wow so, and at the time were you worried about stretching your budget that much oh yeah yeah it's like boy can i afford to buy a house <laughs> <laughs> And I did some sweat equity work on it, which uh, I'm not a contractor. So <laughs> uh, it took me uh, six months to do baseboard molding throughout. So. Okay. <laughs> so your family hires out now? Is that what you're saying? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I've, I've gotten to know a lot of good vendors. Yeah. So in the late 90s, what was the environment like, the housing sales and rental environment? How has it changed? Yeah, you know, it was, um, like I was saying, the interest rates were higher at the time. And then we kind of came through, uh, we came through the 2001, you know, 9-11 and some things that, a uh, little bit of a kind of a mini recession in there. And then, and then we had the crazy run up where um, lenders, uh, bless their hearts, weren't really, they were doing like this uh no income verification loans and uh i i i don't remember it ever being that crazy i would talk to people that were buying three or four homes and they uh, and they were working you know at you know the front counter at home depot or something and and it just didn't feel it felt like too much of a frenzy and of course it was uh pr home prices were just skyrocketing you could buy a house and it was almost like stock trading you bought a house early 2005 probably sell it for more a couple months later just doing nothing to it it was it was very yeah. much like that so uh times have really changed from there and now i think lenders have done a good job of you know this especially this last 10 years of qualifying people and making sure that um you know they have good programs for 
for home buyers, but um, also kind of protecting the credit. And there, there isn't this, you know, crazy uh, secondary market uh, paper that's being sold. I, I don't think that, you know, creates an issue for our economy. So I think it's a much more stable market that way. Mm -hmm. So when people start um, predicting, like buyers and sellers think there's a big crash coming yeah, uh, yeah. because this feels oh so familiar, what do you say to those folks? Well, um, you know, normally kind of just real estate cyclical. Um, I, I honestly don't think we'll see, and I could be wrong, a crash like 08. You know, that was a lot of forces coming together that um, I think uh, created a, a real big mess. Um, so I don't I don't see that. Um, I, I think that, you know, making sure you stay with the mindset that it is cyclical. Be smart about your purchases. You know, don't, um, you know, try and, um, you know, if it's on the income property side, make sure the numbers work. Kind of be smart about what you're getting into. Um, and then on the residential side, uh, you know, make sure you can afford it. And if things change, it doesn't, you know, affect you too much, but mm -hmm. over time it'll go back up. Mm -hmm. Well, that's pretty, pretty commonsensical, huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, I think so. Yeah. And, you know, it's interesting that we're, um, on the multifamily side, that's still been a pretty hot market for, you know, people wanting to pick up multifamily rentals, it's maybe slowed down a little bit this year compared to the, it was a frenzy for a while there. Mm -hmm. um, and then commercial seems to be holding, um, you know, uh, you hear in the larger markets that the office market is just, you know, people because of uh, remote work and things, they're running from office uh, sector, but um, I don't think our, our area is quite, you um, as susceptible to that, but, and then I, I do still, you know, I've talked to some of my commercial construction friends and they're still busy. They've got a lot in the pipeline. Are they? That's great. Yeah. Which seems to kind of, you would think that'd be slowing up, but, um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, it seems like there's still, um, there's still growth happening in our area. So that's good. Now, I've always heard, and I don't know, when you go into a recession, usually the residential side kind of leads us into a recession and commercial follows, and then res residential comes back out first and commercial follows after that. So, you know, whether we're, I don't, I don't know whether we're going into a recession or not, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, residential's definitely slowed up. Mm -hmm. um, and then just in the last couple of weeks, you mentioned um, really just last two weeks since the holiday that um, it got busier. And I saw that too. In fact, mm -hmm. it almost, um, and I'd love your take on this. It feels that our spring market might've been delayed and people are just oh. like deciding now to do everything where normally we're winding down in yeah. September, not speeding up. That's interesting. Yeah. But it just feels backwards. I hadn't thought of that, but I, I do think you're right. Cause it was, it was kind of a sluggish spring, if you will, not your normal, I think. And I tell you, it was like, I don't know, people dropped their kids off at school or whatever. And uh, they were like, Hey, let's go look at property. Um, <laughs> they were waiting for school to start. I didn't. I don't know. It to it me. Just, like we're getting house. a bigger house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or maybe downsizing. Um, yeah, it seems like uh, just after the Labor Day, um, we've been a lot busier with people out there showing and um, you know have uh, offers, and so that's good. Mm hmm. Yeah, I'm curious um, because the our MLS tracks how many key boxes get opened, and it's kind of an interesting number. Yeah. Um, so I was definitely going to look in October because it's always backward looking, yes, uh, and see if it was our imagination or not. Yeah, that'd be good. I didn't look at that recently, um, but you're right. I, I, that's a that's a good trend to, to look at. I think it will be up. Yeah, opinion. we'll see. But I'm glad to hear that you had the same experience. I always hesitate to say anything to somebody. <laughs> well, maybe it was just my world. <laughs> yeah, and that can be at times. But uh, yeah, yeah, no, I think I think generally we'll see if it continues, but it feels good. 
Do you know um, how many agents you have there at Remax Platinum? And is it just the one location or? Yeah, the, okay. the Remax office is 24 agents. Okay, that's good size. Yeah, and we're we're located off of Barnett and Black Oak. And mm -hmm. Beautiful building. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then on the CPM side, we've got the office, the little office in Ashland or Medford office and then one in Grants Pass. Mm -hmm. How's Grants Pass doing just in general, both property management and sales? How's that going? Uh, the property management seems to be going pretty well. Um, you know, I think generally uh, rental values trail a little bit uh, up there compared to Medford, but not a lot. Um, Vacancy is pretty low up there still. Um, on the sales side, I don't, we don't have as many agents uh, operating in that market, so I probably can't say too much there, but um, but on the rental side, yeah, still a strong market there as well. So are, are do you still have a lot of investors that want to buy properties? Yes. In fact, I <laughs> I talked to two this week that are like, if you have anything, let me know. Uh, multifamily, they were specifically looking for. Mm -hmm. Like big apartment buildings or just four? Um, kind of smaller multiplexes. Mm -hmm. Six to eight units. Yeah. Six to yeah. eight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And are any of those getting built? Like, is that any of the commercial there, development? There are some. Um, we just don't have a lot of land anymore. For no. Stuff like and, and you know, it, it's it still is one of the things that um, has kind of hit that part of things too, is the um, interest rates, the cost of construction, the land availability. I mean, it all kind of puts pressure on uh, our ability to build more units. Uh, the the ones I mentioned earlier, kind of, they were in contract on that land for a while uh, and have been working on it. So um, I know that the state our governor put out an edict that wants 36,000 more uh, housing units built every year. But I think we're going to have to figure out some other ways uh, to maybe reduce some of the or streamline things to make that happen. Um, maybe reduce some of the regulation or so we're, we're going to have to get creative. To How about just that. lower the fees? Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I uh, I had an experience, I don't know if I should say, but uh, and where uh, in a certain smaller town uh, here in, in this valley, um, had a duplex lot looking to build on it, and the, the uh, permits were $33,000 for a duplex lot. So, you know, when you factor that in and you factor in the cost of construction and the, even the interest rates, if you're putting debt on the property, it definitely... <laughs> Uh, makes it harder to pencil. Before you even buy a nail, it was 20 something thousand. Yeah. And the ADU fees in some smaller locales, because we're not yeah. mentioning names, but they can be close to 20,000 for one ADU. And that yeah. you're just adding a cottage to your yard, right? And that if seems like such an easy way to get us more housing, which right. our housing will create affordability. So, mm -hmm. Right. Because it's supply and demand. Yeah. And we need it at every level. So. We do. We do. Now, it's kind of fun to watch um, the laws change because Ashland was really at the forefront, I think, in our area of the cottage idea. Oh, yeah. A lot mm -hmm. of smaller units. And it yeah. seems like that's kind of getting some legs down in Ashland, the smaller, yes. the smaller dwellings. And I think that's just going to be the trend we're going to see just because of cost. I think, you know, mm -hmm. see smaller homes mm -hmm. um, and, and more kind of denser living. If you mm -hmm. will. Well, at least there would be some entry level for people because that's kind of where we're hurting. It seems. Yeah. It's, it's hard to provide that. Um, yeah. So I think smaller is going to make it a little more affordable. We're talking to David Wright of Commercial Property Management, CPM. I keep calling That's it. Okay. You can tell how, old, how <laughs> long I've been around. CPM yes. and also Remax Platinum. Yeah. And, uh, we've just got a couple of seconds left. Do you want to give the uh, CPM phone number for those that oh, might want to yeah. uh, talk to you about property management? Yeah, we can handle pretty much any type of residential, commercial, HOAs, manufactured home parks, 541-773-6400.
And we'll, we'll do that again at the end of our last segment. We just have to take a quick break and say thank you to our wonderful sponsors. Uh, we have Mutual Mortgage, Guy Giles. We will say thank you to our local Rogue Valley Association Realtors and John L. Scott, Ashland, and Medford. Do not touch that dial. We got more of David Wright coming up. Well, hey, Southern Oregon. Welcome back to The Real Estate Show. We're chatting with David Wright from Remax Platinum, also CPM Property Management. David, thanks again so much for giving us your time today. Yeah, thanks for having me. So during the break, um, we were uh, talking a little bit about condominiums. And yeah. uh, you said you had been involved in converting apartment buildings to condos. Let's let's hear about that. Yeah, I wasn't the owner, but I was involved as kind of management and consulting. And um, it was back kind of mid 2000s. And it was an interesting project. There were, I think, uh, about 100 apartment units that this uh, developer, we'll call them, uh, converted those to individual condominium units. And so we were seeing some of that back then. Um, with, and it's an interesting uh, concept. It's challenging because you're taking an existing um, you know, building and, uh, you know, you're getting, you're, you're doing um, basically a survey of each unit so that people all in their own units, but then, you know, you've got an existing building that could have some, you know, deferred maintenance and those kind of things. And so, oh, yeah. so you kind of walk into the, some things that, that pop up. So after you sell the units to people that could be, become an issue, um, going forward. And so that was a little tricky. Um, but then, um, you know, I think it, what happened to them, unfortunately, I think they started the project in 2005 and then 2008 hit. So they had sold maybe half of them. And then, so it ended up being kind of a broken condo project and, until they finally got them all sold eventually. But so there's risk in doing those kind of things. You and I were talking about converting, we were hearing stories about, you know, converting malls and those kind of things. And I know that even I think the the state um, or maybe nationally they're talking about office buildings being converted to um, residential housing. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we're going to see more of that. Um, it's going to be interesting how it works because uh, it seems like it would be pretty expensive to try and take an existing office space and and put in bathrooms and enough bathrooms. That's what I was saying. It's all about the potties, right? Because that's <laughs> yeah. where all the money goes. You've got to have them. Yeah. But in um, some of the um, enclosed malls, like the really beautiful fancy pants malls, I think a lot of those stores had their own bathrooms, each individual oh, yeah. suite. Oh. So that would actually pencil better. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. No, I think, I, I do think we're going to see more um, more of that kind of uh, creative housing, if you will. And then we're, you know, in our area uh, and in the state, we're seeing, um, you know, hotels, motels that are being converted to. Um, Can we talk about that? Do you, are you in on that? No, but I'm familiar. Like the Super 8 in Ashland was converted to a low barrier shelter. Um, mm -hmm. That was uh, one of many. Yeah, ORA, I think, uh, which mm -hmm. is options for homeless residents of Ashland. Mm -hmm. But they um, closed the pool, folks. Don't yeah, worry. Yeah, they did. They filled that in. They filled that actually, in. They, they didn't get a pool. I actually took a tour of it. It is a pretty interesting uh, concept where they, um, you know, they have support uh, counselors, if you will, or um, I can't remember what they call it. Like Oh, on site? On site that oh that's good help check people in try and connect people with services so you know I, I we have that kind of you know that uh, homeless issue that we're gonna have to you know figure out some longer term solutions for and you know some of those are are uh, some good organizations trying to help so um, that's one over there but I've I've heard I, I think Rogue Retreat has one that they got some money through um the state or maybe it was federally uh, uh to buy a hotel on riverside in medford and yeah they've yeah i forget the name of it but yeah they got that yeah, one I can't remember. or maybe two they might even got two yeah so anyway there's a lot of creative um 
ideas out there on how to house people. So, uh, I think so we'll when you, I'm sorry, I, I'm just dying to ask you about the super eight. Cause I haven't met anybody that's been in one. Oh yeah. Uh, so, um, did they take out every other room to make them more like one bedroom apartments or are they still motel rooms? They're pretty much still suites, like a, a hotel room suite. Um, mm -hmm. and okay. So okay. like a studio. Yes. Yeah. With mm -hmm. a bathroom. Um, and they have, I think they have 50 units. I could be wrong. Did or, they put kitchens in there? Um, I think they've got kind of a, you know, refrigerator and a hot plate. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, a dorm room sort of. Yeah. Yeah. And, okay. But that's functional. Yeah. And it, um, you know, one of the things with some of the, some of these ideas, um, we're just going to have to make sure somehow these organizations still get funded in the future too. So, so um, you know, like that one, I know they do a pretty good job of, uh, of uh, fundraising. And then also I think they get some state money, but anyway, lots of it, not directly related to sales and property management, but kind of does affect us all. Well, and I don't know about you, but I get asked about those places all the time. And I just yeah. didn't know the skinny about them. I just know what happened and then boom, and, yeah, and then was... the investors wanted to know why they weren't, um, why it didn't go out to public bid to buy, um, to buy those and to be the owner that's with the state contract. I don't them. know the answer to that. <laughs> right, right. I'm just saying that's why I, that's why I'm jumping all over this. Like, oh my I gosh, I know about this. Yeah. No, there's a lot. Uh, there seems to be a lot happening. Uh, well, the governor, you know, devoted 220 million towards, I think it was that much, um, towards kind of um, shelter beds throughout the state and our region received 8.8 .8 million to create uh, a minimum of 67 shelter beds and 133 families be rehoused. So if they mm -hmm. were homeless, get them into housing. And so mm -hmm. uh, it'll be interesting to see how how that uh, works long-term. Uh, yeah, yeah, we should check back that. in with them. Yeah, so... So in the couple minutes we have left, um, yeah. where do you see our uh, housing market, both sales and property management going, not only between now and the end of 2023, but just, you know, crystal ball next year. What, what do we think is going to happen next year? Oh, that's a good question. Um, you know, I think through the end of the year, I think we're going to kind of still see what we're seeing right now not a lot of inventory it's just hard to get you can't build it quickly enough and um uh it, like i said on the multifamily side it seems to be we're getting some traction um and so i don't i think prices aren't going to on the residential side drop that much they haven't been it's because mainly the lack of inventory so there aren't a lot of options out there for people but i think uh the last quarter the the year over year change in median home price was five down 5%. So it's so, not... so stop waiting for a crash. Yeah. I kind of don't think it's going to just drop out just because we don't have inventory. And I think that's going to kind of continue. Just, you know, it's too hard to get enough out there and that the rates kind of holding where they are. So, but you know, keep buying. <laughs> keep <selling. laughs> because if we do have even a little tiny bit of appreciation, that's money in yeah. your pocket and you had a place to live and it's it's gonna keep going up so eventually everybody wants to be in southern oregon people are still moving here we have a great place to live so we do uh, yeah well thank you david wright uh yeah. cpm property management remax platinum one of my favorite people hope you'll come on again thank you. maybe uh at the end of the year we'll yeah. do the 2023 recap see if our blue sky projections <laughs> This is recorded, right? I guess. Yeah, yeah. They we'll can hold back. us to it, can't they? Well, and that's always kind of fun at the end of the year. Yeah. Well, folks, uh, thank you, David. Have a beautiful thank weekend. You. See you next week. Bye now. Bye. Thanks.